the guilty uh, filmmaker Antoine Fuca and actor Jake Gyllenhaal. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on a, a movie that I shouldn't have watched before trying to sleep. It's very tense. <laughs> That's a bad idea. The two of you previously worked together on Southpaw. Had you been looking to do something together for a while? Yeah, we remain friends and we're always sending things back and forth to each other, you know, try to find something to, to do together. It makes sense. I don't know if Jake wanted to work with me, though, really. <laughs> Even though I sent this to Antoine, but yes, yeah, no, it was a, it was just out. It was like a, I knew he wouldn't do it. And then, oh, no, he wants to do it. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> This is emergency operator 625. I've just erupted. Okay, sir, I don't even know where you are. Last name? Is this the fire department? No, ma'am, you've reached 911, but I can connect you to fire. Oh, just hold the I line. Can... What did she look like? She was tall, pink hair, in heels. Hey, man, can you tell me how long it's going to take? Things sometimes just come together in that way. I think we were both felt what sort of like a transposition of that story could be in an American context. Mm -hmm. And what it was saying at the time meant a lot to both of us. We talked a lot about that. And then I think, you know, the story obviously just works as a thriller and is packed with tension, but I think put into the context of America today, it, 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 it has an undercurrent in saying a lot of different things. Because it's based on a 2018 Danish thriller. Do you remember um, sort of your first experience of seeing it and how that felt? And I, I don't think that like you probably go into movies thinking, oh, I want to play that part or. I felt something in my bones that felt like, you know, I think maybe partially it's from my theater background and that, you know, there people, people play, you know, Macbeth, you know, people are allowed to play Hamlet again and again, different interpretations. And I felt like this had a very universal theme that was essentially very strong and I, I I could feel a, a different form of interpretation coming through me and I, I went let's try and see if we can remake this and Antoine just confirmed when he wanted to do the film after we had developed it for a couple of years that it was the right thing I think it's it's a horror film in its own right you know um, and it has that sense to it but there was just something in me that felt like this needs to be done in an American context. I just want to talk to you. Okay, I'm hanging up. Just out for a drive, sweetie, okay? Is there someone with you? Uh huh. Does the person you're with know you called us? No. Who do they think you called? Your child? Yes, sweetie. Does the person you're with have a weapon? Yes. I think the original draft Jake sent me was it took place in New Orleans. As we talked more about the character, there was something about, for me, Dante's Inferno. Mm. Um, the idea that, you know, this person is in purgatory, who's kind of dying. LA has always been interesting to me that way. You know, it's just like this spread out kind of bizarre desert, you know, um, of no man's land in a weird way, you know? And um, the idea that the fires had just taken place maybe a few months ago, um, I think there was uh, the George Floyd situation that happened. There was a lot of things going on in the world and then I watched uh, the Danish film, uh, Gustav's film, and I was like, maybe I shouldn't remake this movie. It's really well done, <laughs> really well done. But the opportunity to do it with Jake and to, to deal with um, uh, issues that I feel that this country is still dealing with uh, when it comes to policing and, and, and also just mental health and uh, how we uh, are quick to judge each other today with all the computers and Twitter and Instagram and everything. I thought that would be a challenge and would be uh, important to do. The script dictated a certain um, pressure and, and a pace, right? Um, COVID also dictated we wanted to do something that would keep everyone safe to get you in and out. Uh, when Jake first called me, he said, let's do it in five days. And I was like, like this, that's going to be almost impossible. And we would have both probably tried it, but we were, we were a little more uh, logical than that. Um, we came up with 11 days and uh, those 11 days are probably the most intense 11 days of making a movie. Even though it was scheduled for 11 days, we didn't really recognize that if someone had tested positive or something happened that there would be almost as long, if not the same length of quarantine. 
needed. So if you're shooting a 50 day movie and you quarantine you know, your schedule and your insurance and all those things are planned for a particular type of break, but you're talking about your entire shooting schedule. So that means everybody's schedule that they blocked off all these very talented people that have come together means we'd start having losing them right and left, meaning the movie would basically sort of fall apart. Everyone had come together for this particular period of time, for this very short particular period of time. This movie offered that opportunity, you know? It said, it's, it was speaking to us as like, a, what do you got very simply? Throw away all the extra stuff. What's on your tool belt that you really need? Let's go and see. And, you know, Antoine was around someone who tested positive the Friday before he started shooting Monday and had to go into quarantine. And so the whole weekend before we started shooting on a Monday, we had to figure out a plan of how the heck do we get him because he kept tested negative somewhere safe away from us. We can't shut this movie down. And so we put it, got a van that was equipped with monitors and everything and put him a block away from the stage and then hardwired me to him on stage. And he directed the entire movie a block away in a van, you know, uh, which was like, you know, just one of the many things that happened in the process of us trying to get this thing done. With actors from around the world at the same time, they had to then call in and do the performance uh, live so that Jake can have a rhythm with these actors, you know, a real performance. And they're in Australia, New York. But then that was a technical problem because of the sound, the, the delay in Zoom, right? So he had many different voices in his ear while he's trying to perform, you know, and um, that, was, that was very challenging. Uh, Ed Novak, our sound guy, was pulling his hair out, that he, the little bit of hair he has left, but he figured it out. And Jake, I was just in my van kind of enjoying him going through this madness, uh, <laughs> watching him, hearing himself perform while he hears another actor perform and their echo. Wow. And you yeah. in his ear as well. Probably. And I was in his ear. I kind of enjoyed it. I got to be honest with you. I mean, if I'm being honest, I enjoy Jake going through this process, you know. <laughs> I like to see him kind of handle that. It was really yeah. interesting. It was really interesting, different than it will ever be and different than it ever has been. It was even in the midst of, you know, a terrible worldwide pandemic, we were pretty grateful to be making something. Very rarely on a movie do you feel as an actor in front of a camera like you're the one who's potentially in a dangerous place. I remember the first time I took my PPE off and the whole crew is you know, sort of safe under their masks and doing stuff. And I didn't have it on. I thought the whole reason why I like this job is because it's pretend, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, all of a sudden you're exposed to what's actually happening in this weird, interesting way. And I, I just, I think everyone felt so grateful to be there and to be working. There is a scared little girl whose mother has been abducted. I need a better location. I'll get it. How will you get it? I know Emily's with you. Where are you going? There was a lot of stuff clearly bottled up, you know, from already a long period of time through the initial period of, of um, the pandemic and a lot of feelings and a lot of things happening. And, you know, I, I'm not someone who looks at being in front of the camera as a means of expressing those feelings, you know, that, that it's a, it's a, it's therapeutic. It's, it's relieving, you know, it's a safe place to let go of feelings or things that would otherwise be dangerous in another context, you know, or uh, off-putting in profound ways, you know? And so I don't really look at being in front of a camera as like, Oh, I take it with me. I, I say like, Oh, this is the safe space where I can let these things out and then it's uh, it's sort of an exorcise, you know, it's like I've, an exorcism, you know, of some sort. And then I go home and, uh, you know, I did drink the bottle of wine like the first night that Antoine gave me as a star gift, you know, but um, I mean, but it was, it was relieving, you know. Is it more challenging to play or maybe, maybe it's just different challenges, but, you know, someone like Joe who is, you know, going through so much, this is about relation. It's about a relationship with the filmmaker. Like I think the connection you have through a camera with the person who's watching that thing. And 
I've known Antoine for so long now too. These are relationships. And he has his own relationships with the number of actors he's worked with over and over again. And I think that's the feeling I have really is like the connection with those people. Um, it's not really the part as much, if I'm honest. It's really like when I'm giving something in a scene, I'm giving it to Antoine. If I knew he'd say, oh, he'd say, wow, wow, okay, okay. I remember he would just go on the walk. He'd say that at the end of a take, and I go, "Okay, I think he's happy with that." You know, I'll go again though. You know, um, so I think that's really what it's about more than the character, really, to me. Yeah.